Hello and thank you for joining us. This is Health Matters on Channels Television. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. There are now over 183 million cumulative COVID, uh, cases of COVID-19 globally. And as at Friday, July the 2nd, the death toll was over 3.9 million. In Nigeria, there were more than 167,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, more than 164,000 recoveries, and 2,121 deaths. That makes a total of 302 new infections, 432 recoveries, and two deaths recorded in the week between June the 25th and July the 2nd. Recovery rate is 97.99%. Case fatality is 1.26%. Tested samples are over 2.3 million, and more than 3.4 million vaccines have been administered. However, we are no longer the fastest vaccine administering country in Africa. That honor goes to Morocco with over 18 million vaccines administered. To the topic of the day, an allergy is an immune system response to a foreign substance that's not typically harmful to the body. Some sources say the rise in prevalence of allergic diseases has continued for more than 50 years and sensitization rates to one or more common allergens among school children is between 40 and 50 percent. My guest is operations manager at Cleaner Lancet Laboratories and an occupational health physician, Dr. Lohire Umelu. You are welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about allergies. I've heard of hay fever. I've heard of some food allergies. Are there any others? There are many others. Just as you've mentioned, any substance that would cause a reaction in that person can create or can be known as an allergen and can create that hypersensitivity reaction. So you can have be allergic to dander, to pets. That's to uh, dust, pet fur. Pet fur to dander, to mold. So that's the black that you may would, see. Would on. that extend to the mink coat it after could. it has been processed? Yes, it can. Wow. It can. It can extend to that. And I like that you mentioned that for some people, even though they may have been exposed to it once after it's been treated, there wouldn't be a reaction to it. However, when they're exposed to it again, then you would see oh, that reaction. I see. So sometimes... An allergen is like, you know, you're just like normal, like every other person. Yes. But the second time is a problem. Correct. So the first time you are sensitized to the allergen. So for instance, the first time um, a person eats a peanut, um, they would have a hypersensitive reaction to it or they're sensitized to it, sorry. And in that time, the immune system responds to say, though this is harmful or harmless to everyone else, your we don't body, like it yes, we don't like it here, and so notes it. The next time you are exposed to that item again, peanut, for example. All sorts of things. All sorts. Let's talk about those all sorts of things. What are these symptoms that people get when they have an allergic reaction? So it can vary from very mild to quite severe. So some of the mild symptoms include teary eyes, um, or itchy eyes, red eyes, um, watery nose. Some people may have a stomach upset, diarrhea-like symptoms, etc. And then it can go even further to as much as inflammation. So swelling of the tongue, swelling of the mouth, and difficulty breathing would be, of course, one of the more severe symptoms that could come up. I'm sure swelling of the tongue and the mouth is a big red flag. But when it comes to runny eyes, itchy nose, all that kind of thing, it's pretty generalized and people may not notice Correct. that there's actually a problem. But why, why really would the body be reacting to something that is not supposed to be harmful to it? What's wrong? What's the difference? So the difference is the immune system. So of course, if the immune system is not in, or when the immune system is involved, that is when we refer to it as an allergy. When it is not, then you may hear of things like intolerances, uh -huh. etc. We'll get to that later. Yes. Um, so for, like we mentioned earlier, when we have a substance that the immune system reacts to, 
and says this is not right, shouldn't be here, is, some, is taking that harmless item as though it is harmful. The immune system builds up the mast cells, just to get a little technical. It produ reproduces that to say, okay, soldiers, note you this thing. You go after that Yes, thing. note this thing and go after it next time you see it in the body. And so that's in trying to protect itself, that's when you see all those symptoms. Okay, you spoke about the second time, but can somebody react violently to an, you know, an allergen the first time? Yes, it can happen. It can happen, though it doesn't happen as often, but it can happen. In fact, in terms of something that may happen on your skin or be touch, you know, come into contact sorry, with your skin and that you can have a real you know, blowout in rashes, et cetera, and that is an immediate response, is a, an immediate reaction. We have the delayed reaction as well. And that can happen on a vast number of allergens. It can vary from quite mild to, you know, full-blown anaphylactic. I'm wondering, you know, how sensitive we are to this kind of thing in this country. I, I'm quite sure a lot of people are hearing some things for the first time today. That what is that reaction to food, They'll dander, okay. you know? Do, do we, are we sensitive enough? Do, what do you think about the Nigerian population? Do we, are, you know, are we catching on to this? Um, so I would say yes, we're not as aware in Nigeria to allergies or intolerances in general. However, we are catching on. In fact, in, in the population worldwide, the increase in allergies and intolerances have increased I don't have an exact percentage. That's another thing I'm wondering. In general, has it really increased, or is it the awareness, awareness that has gone up? So, based on research and study, they have increased, and the feeling or the proposed idea behind that has to do with the way we manage food in this day and age. Our food packaging processes, our food storage processes, that, those are the ways and um, we think that might have increased the number of allergies that we see nowadays. However, that's still a speculation. Okay, so there are you know, a host of things. People are allergic to milk, tree nuts, eggs, and all sorts of things. But here's what I've heard, that you know, somebody comes and says, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. My eyes keep running, they are red. I have this cold that refuses to go. Mm. And then they, they do a process of elimination. Can you yes. explain that to us? Because it's like, they can't really point to what they are reacting to or why this is happening. How do you do the elimination process? Okay, so there are many ways we could go about that same elimination process. So of course, first of all, we're going to ask that individual to come in uh, ask the person and get a full history and understanding of when does this happen? Do you notice that it happens during particular seasons that it comes up? Maybe it's during raining season, it comes up, or it's during dry season. Maybe that's more of a dust situation, okay. or et cetera. And then, after, of course, we would now go on to prod. Okay, do you notice that it happens after you have your bath or it's in the morning? It's in the after evening. you've had your bath? Yes. There what are does different... that have to do with it? It could be all sorts. It's, it might be that it's the lotion. It's okay. something else. I, it, it's just giving us an idea to try to, like you said, zone in on what that is. Now, once we've zoned in on that, for instance, we notice that it's in a particular day, it's a particular time, or it's, it, it only happens when you go to restaurants, for instance. Uh -huh. That's also pointing in another direction that this could be a food allergy. It could be something in the food or it's something that she does, he or she typically does not eat at home. So that helps you to eliminate all those other aspects down and zone in on what could be the allergen. Now, when you do that, of course, you now have to go on to testing. That would then... Okay, so before you test, you typically have to do this elimination yes, process. correct. So you now go on to testing. What happens there? Okay, so testing takes on two modes. Um, the common... There's one version, which is the skin prick test, and then you have the blood test. Both have their own advantages and disadvantages. The skin prick test, as it says, is that you're going to introduce a small portion of the allergen into the person's skin to see if you see a reaction. 
And you know, that's like when you get a mosquito bite, how it swells up. Uh -huh. So that's what you're looking at. We refer to that as a wheel. And so when you see that wheel of flare, a redness, then we know, okay, there's a reaction. But I'll use this point time to note that seeing a reaction only tells us that there's a likelihood of an allergy. It does not tell us how severe the, the reaction is. would be. Is there something that could tell you that? No, not at so this time. So you just tell the person, stay off this stuff. Exactly. Reduce or avoid. Okay, reduce or avoid. But how about if it's something the person cannot avoid? Like dust moods. Exactly. So this is where medication comes into, into play. Um, there are antihistamines, steroids, etc. that can be used to help the individual, you know, reduce the symptoms that they would experience during that time. And, whilst, and that's where the blood test is quite helpful um, above the skin prick test. Because with the blood test, you can still continue to test and find out or try to zone in on what that allergen is, even whilst they're on medication. With the skin prick test, you wouldn't be able to do that. And so the blood test, just with one venous sample, you're going to be able to test for a barrage of many you know, allergens. And what we do is that we have them in groups. So like you mentioned, the food mix, so that's wheat, fish, soy, we will test against oh, that. Oh, seafood is a bad one. It is a really bad one. Shellfish, crayfish. Yes. Uh, uh, what do they call oysters? Oysters. You see a lot of Nigerians now allergic to crayfish. Ah. Oh. It's actually that more is, common. That is so disheartening. Very disheartening. What do we cook without <laughs> crayfish? So it, you and your whole family have to ban crayfish just to survive. Or for that person, only for the individual. Now, that's a lot of cooking going on in the house. Okay, now, um, you mentioned a word, uh, and I'd like to know what does it mean? What's anaphylaxis? Okay, so anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis sorry, is a sudden, life-threatening condition that happens after being exposed to a particular allergen. It could be a drug. It could be, um, you know, a substance that the person inhaled or touched. And anaphylaxis can occur immediately or it can be as delayed as as long as 12 hours a day. But it's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous and life Do you have stock um, medications that they use for such things, yes. you know, as, as an emergency. Epinephrine. And so that's, oh, where that's you what they call the EpiPen. EpiPen. Yes. But we don't have EpiPens here. I've never seen anybody we, we with EpiPens. We have EpiPens. We have EpiPens. So. Because of the increased <laughs> prevalence now. So you have some patients who have an EpiPen. Yes, correct. And, and this is something that they're allowed to carry on their person? Yes, they just are. Just in case? Just in case. And in fact, it is the same EpiPen that is used when you're doing the challenge test that you somewhat different from the elimination test, but also the challenge test, which is now the gold standard, actually, for checking for allergies, in which you take the, pers the person into the hospital in, an, in a controlled environment. So for instance, if the suspicion is that it's a food allergy, they're going to put several different foods, try to mask what that is, and then give them doses in 15 minutes, continue to increase the dose or the amount of the substance to see their reaction to it. Obviously, once there is a reaction, you need to be ready with that with EpiPen. The EpiPen. Now, the, is this EpiPen an, an injection or a, something you inhale? It's an injection, and then you do have the nasal inhalation type, but it's an injection. Okay. It's good, really good, to know that we have EpiPens here. Yes, we do. Nigeria is moving on. Yes. We are yes. trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I'm told that we need to go on a break now. But when we come back, we'll continue this interesting conversation. Please stay with us till after the break. We'll be back. Welcome back. It's Health Matters. We're talking about allergies, and I'm with Dr. Omelu. And uh, you can call with questions about allergies. Call 005-468-3514. It should be showing on your screen now. If you have any questions about allergies while we continue the discussion. So, Dr. Omelu. What's the difference between an allergy and an intolerance? Let me give you an example. I know a lot of people who say, you know, um, if I take anything with milk in it, mm. I can't, you know, I can't hold my bowels anymore. Yeah. What's that? Is that an allergy or an intolerance? 
That's an intolerance. Okay. Okay. But there's and an aller allergy to milk. So what does that look like? Correct. Okay. So the difference is, and if you remember the definition that I gave at the beginning, in that a person reacting to something that they ordinarily would or others wouldn't react to via their immune system okay. is an allergy. With intolerances, the immune system is rarely involved. Okay. And so with um, in the immune system involved, the hypersensitive reaction would cause the inflammation, the symptoms that I mentioned, you know, itchy eyes, swollen tongue, mouth, and, you know, God forbid, death. Wow. And so that does happen sometimes. It can right? happen. It can happen. Whereas with an intolerance, it does not involve the immune system. Most times, let's use the example that you gave to um, they have difficulty with their bowels once they take milk is because of an enzyme de deficiency. And you, I'm sure you've heard of, oh, I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, yes. I'm lactose. Oh, yes. That is what they're referring to. And it is very common in those of Caribbean descent, Africans as well. Africans as, are so mm, having that thing. Yes. We, we do. And the thing with intolerances as well, if you're trying to do a quick, not exactly accurate test, is to say, if I were to take more of this item, do I get, um, see a difference in the symptoms? So with an allergy, any tiny amount, you would still see a reaction. Okay. Whereas with an intolerance, with small amounts, you may not see ah, anything. That's why they say, okay, if I just take a little, little I'll exactly. be fine. Exactly. Okay. Whereas if you take a milkshake, then they're in the bathroom. That's it for the night. Yes. We have a phone call coming in. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your question? Yeah, my question goes to uh, the doctor. She was speaking about the um, allergies. And then I was trying to, I want to understand, I've been having these um, it's like pimples, but let's say, yeah, pimples and teeth at the same time. So, you know, she spoke about allergies. So, and then it's been long. It comes and goes. I've been using so many um, ointments on it. But I have, I have to go to some gynecologist, sorry, dermatologists to talk about the skin. So I don't really know. What can it be that I'm allergic to that leads to such AIDS and pimples? It comes at times in my body, around. So, and I've been trying to, I've used other things, it goes and comes, it goes and comes. So, and I was able to snap, snap a picture of it and send it to somebody. So the person showed it to a doctor. He now said I'm allergic to something, but I don't know what I'm really allergic to. Okay. Thank you so much. What could he be allergic to? And that coming and going, is that a sign of something? It's, it's very common. So it it's actually fits in with what we've been discussing so far. And if it is an allergy... Of course, he now needs to go through that process of yes. elimination. What we From what about. you told me, th this is best done in the hospital. It really needs to be. Sit down with your doctor, have discuss that discussion. what did I eat, what did I rub, where did I go, exactly. and then do the tests exactly. before you can find exactly. out. Exactly. And the reason why it is going and coming, as he put it, is because some days he's ingesting or touching what or is exposed to that allergen, and sometimes he he's is not. not. Okay, so there you are. It's um, a doctor you've got to go and see. Let's proceed. Now, a school of thought says that if you eat and your stomach becomes bloated, then maybe overnight it goes back to the normal size, then something is wrong with what you're eating. Is that an allergy? First of all, is it true? <laughs> then is it an allergy and intolerance? Some people say when they take a lot of maybe wheat, Okay. Stomach swells to alarming proportions. By the next morning, it's back to normal. What is that? We are still going back to intolerance. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes. So, in fact, intolerance is more of a digestive issue okay. in general. And the symptoms of an intolerance, for instance, is diarrhea, bloatedness, indigestion, feeling of that burning sensation in the throat, um, you know, just unease, general discomfort, bloating of the, you know, and so at that point in time, that's why they feel that discomfort. And once that particular item, be it milk, has gone through the system and is out, they're back, they're to, back normal. to normal. Let's take this call from Miracle. Hello, Miracle. Yes, good 
Hello, Ma. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. What's your question? Okay. Um, when I wake up, I have this I have this allergy that my face gets swollen. And there's some things on my back. And my mom even had to buy me Loratin to help the to help the face. Did you go to a doctor? Was this prescribed? No. Okay. Uh, okay, I think that's it. So. Okay. Okay, so based on what she has said, of course, we can't diagnose that over no, the phone. It's, it's too sketchy. <laughs> yes, way too, and not enough information. Of course, still a very extensive discussion needs to happen with her doctor, but she did mention something. Puffy face? Yes, a puffy face and a rash on the back. And it is also um, reacting well to loratidine. She mentioned that loratidine is an antihistamine. Okay, an so she does have an allergy. Yes. Antihistamines work in allergies. And, you know, when you have a, an allergic reaction in which the immune system is triggered, and, you know, I mentioned that it gets, it tells all those cells that, you know, be prepared, we don't like this thing, uh -huh. and don't let it go far. Uh -huh. The chemical produced at that point in time is histamine and tryptase. And so what loratidine is doing is countering the histamine to reduce the symptoms. So there is an allergy based on what she's saying. Now is to find out what that allergen is yes. to prevent it from happening. Allergen body. being the substance you Correct. are allergic to. Correct. But is there a reason why this is happening in the morning, just when she gets up? It, so that already gives us an idea as to where to zone in on. So it could be that perhaps she's had her AC on throughout the night, or the fan has been blowing. AC, fan? Yes, etc. And then she has been in one position in which dust can ah, okay. settle while she's sleeping. So That's are one. you saying some people can't use air conditioning to sleep? Some people, yes. Or then it could be cold air that they um, have an intolerance, or would I say, no, it's still an allergy towards it anyways. And then the dander that comes from that, okay. or the mold, as tiny as okay, it may be, mold. Yes, that's that they cannot see that would come from This AC. is extensive. <laughs> Let's take this call from Ola. Hello, Ola. Hello, good morning. My name is Adi Ola. Adi Ola. Okay. You have something on there, you need to put it off. Your TV? Okay, Radio? I would actually... Hello? Hello. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Okay. I was diagnosed of um, rhinitis. And um, I, uh, I I went to do a CT scan, and I noticed that the house I moved in has a mold spore around it. I tried to fix it, but it wasn't going. So I was placed on um, saturation, I guess. And I think that act, act actually affected my blood pressure. Okay. So, so what would you like the doctor to react to? Yes, and I don't know what to do. And I noticed that when I wake up in the morning, I have this sandy high, you know. And um, even this morning it happened. So I don't know what to do again. And I'm tired of throwing in centurizing all the time. And at, at some point, I was using much Yeah, you know, It's okay. been a whole lot of drugs, you know. But I don't know what to do again. So I want to are you taking note of those something. drugs? Yes, I couldn't hear Go ahead drugs. and ask her. What are those drugs? Antibiotics? Um, I don't know. Centralizing hydrochloride okay. tablet. That's yes. what it's called. You got that. Yes. Okay, that. Thank, thanks so much, Ola. I, I was totally at sea with the names <laughs> of those drugs. Okay. So, so tell us what's going on here. Yes, so she's rhinitis is inflammation of the nose mm -hmm. area, and sometimes it goes on to our sinuses which are little gaps in our face or pockets in our face that allow for flow, you know. And That's the one that gives you a headache. Yes, and the heaviness and, you know, all of that, sometimes eye throbbing. So that's why she's feeling very uncomfortable. Now she's on antibiotics because the inflammation is caused by an infection. Okay. 
Okay. So as you can see, based on that already, we know that that's different from our allergy, which is based on an immune response, though it's an inflammation, that's right. but it's now not an infection, is because it's reacting to the allergen, the protein. Um, and so for her, of course, she needs to go back to her doctor to then check what's the root cause. Why is she consistently or repeatedly having this rhinitis? Typically, there's an issue. It could just be a pocket somewhere of an, a little abscess that is causing that to go and come back. Okay, I would have asked you more questions, but we're out of time. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the show, Dr. Melu. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being me. with us today. And do watch what you're eating, where you're going. These things are so interesting. Life could be so much more comfortable if you know what to do with yourself. Have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.